Um, yes, so I grew up. I grew up in a small um, in a small city uh, near Paris in Paris region. Uh, so yeah, so I grew up with just my uh, like very 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 regular childhood, I guess, uh, with uh, my parents, my sister uh, in a house there, and um, yeah, so. And then after, so that was from my childhood. Then when I grew up, I I studied in um, uh, in Paris. I did my studies in Paris, uh, very simply. So uh, yeah. So my first reaction. Um, I was a, I was very surprised. I guess like a lot of people, uh, I was very surprised that such uh, yeah that like such a strong and uh, and severe decision and thing was happening. And uh, so so yeah, I was I was pretty much surprised. Though I was like very much following uh, everything that happened before before the the invasion started. So I was following very much the news and. Uh, uh, all the different, like the the diplomatic moves that happened before, and all the different developments. So I was not completely like uh, it was something that didn't happen so suddenly for me. But um, it was definitely I was definitely very much surprised, and uh, I was surprised, and also yeah, I, I felt very it was it was I felt it was like a, a very a very unfair thing. Uh, so uh, yeah, I was very much. Uh, uh, I felt very, very much concerned about this when uh, when I understood that yeah, that like an, an invasion would happen and with all the consequences of it. Uh, so I felt very preoccupied. I felt very surprised and preoccupied. Yeah. Uh, so basically, it it happened uh, progressively, I would say, um, because <clears throat> so in the first in the first days or in the first uh, yeah in the first days of the invasions of uh, when there was all this chaos like happening, people starting to move and everything. I was I was rather following like what the reactions actually of the the Western countries and. Um, and uh, yeah, what, how this thing, would, what shape like this, uh, this event would, would take. Um, and um, then I started to hear some calls here, actually, in, in, um, in France and in Paris of like organizations saying, yeah, like there will, a lot of people are going to come, are going to arrive, are going to need help. A lot of refugees uh, in Poland, in Eastern Europe, but also like Germany and other countries. So uh, yeah, some help needs to be provided to them, and some some stuff needs to be done. Um, so I started to hear some calls here, like organizations collecting things. That was uh, like a supermarket near my place, where uh, yeah, people like an Ukrainian organization was like collecting some, uh, started to collect some food, basic stuff. So I I uh, I started like to talk a little bit with them and like to 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 provide some some products some some supplies. Um, so I, I felt I started to feel yeah the need to probably like to volunteer or to do something a bit more uh, engaging. Um, but so it was really like yeah very progressive progressive thinking. Um, I didn't really know how to do uh, in the beginning. Because um, I heard some people like were taking some cars or like trying like renting some vehicles here and loading loading a lot of, of supplies and products inside and, and uh, just driving directly to to Poland and to the to the Polish border with Ukraine. So uh, like the convoys. So I thought, yeah, maybe I could like find a convoy or something like that or try to participate in that. But it looked a little bit a bit complicated. Uh, I mean, not easily, like not easily do that because, like, I don't have like a vehicle or something like that. So, uh, so for some time, I was a little bit hesitating, and I didn't, yeah, I didn't really know like how to 
concretely do something uh, besides just donating some stuff. Um, and the after after actually after some weeks, I it's really something that I actually saw on the internet, like a YouTube video that I that I watched or of like um, just like two YouTubers who were just traveling in Poland. And they um, they were actually near Krakow. They had heard that in Krakow main station, a lot of refugees were were coming in, and the situation was a bit chaotic. And they so and they recorded they and they interview actually some volunteers who were there. Uh, and these volunteers they were actually like international volunteers, and uh, they were explaining their own story. So it was like a very uh, like <laughs> like um, a good testimony, I guess. Uh, I mean, it was very um, it, it was very useful for me because they were explaining, yeah, we just like came, we, we we're not part of of, a, of an organization, we just came on our, on our on our own, and uh, we just like booked like a um, hotel room nearby, and we just we just came to the main station, and there's like so many people we just help. Uh, we actually we, we volunteer um, besides like the, the Polish authorities just like distribute stuff, distribute supplies all day, like from, uh, from early morning to late in the evening. Uh, so when I saw that, I saw, I, um, I, I told myself, oh, yeah, it's, uh, okay. Some people do that. I mean, now I realize a bit more like how to, how I could possibly like volunteer and help. Uh, so yeah, so, and so I, I just decided, okay, I can just go to Krakow and, uh, it's probably like the cities near like the border, but not very far from the border. Let's say like one of the big cities, uh, one of the first big cities, uh, Poland, uh, from the Ukrainian border. So, um, I thought, okay, I can just go there and go to the, at least to the main station and see like how it is. Uh, and probably I will find other opportunities there or like meet some NGOs, we need volunteers and we'll, we'll start from there. But it was, uh, yeah, it was really that, in that, it really, that's how I kind of took the decision or like when I, I finally like stopped hesitating about doing that. Um, so actually my friends were a bit surprised, uh, because they, they probably didn't really know that, that I felt like, uh, that preoccupied by the, by the invasion and by, by, by the war. So, um, uh, so yeah, they were, uh, they were a bit surprised, like, yes, no, yeah, the war, yeah, they asked me to yeah, do that, like, um, um. Where, what are you, how are you going to do? Are you sure you're like, you're, you're going to go there without an organization for like, uh, just by yourself and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, my, 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 uh, my girlfriend, my partner, she was, um, uh, she was a bit less surprised, I guess, because she, she, she saw like, uh, she saw me like checking the news, like almost every day, uh, just after the war started. And, uh, I, um, I was, discussing this uh, a lot with her as well so uh so yeah but yeah for my friends for my family as well they were a bit surprised uh they were a bit surprised as well no actually i um I have, uh, so I, I work as, um, as an IT project manager, uh, as a freelancer, actually I'm a freelancer. So, uh, I have some flexibility in my, um, in the projects I do and the missions I do. So, uh, so luckily I had like finished like, um, my previous mission before the war started. So I was kind of off, I had some, some off time and, uh, so yeah, so I thought, yeah, it's, it's, it's a good, good. These conditions are good. I mean, it's a good situation just to dedicate some time for, uh, I mean, have the possibility to do it with the work and, and, uh, it's okay if I just, um, 
uh, if I take like a, a, a long period off, let's say to just to just go out here. Uh, it's a, it's also something that I do like some other times. Uh, I usually like take some rather long time off between like some missions just to like to 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 do personal things. Uh, so yeah, so um, uh, it's also it, it helped as well. I mean, obviously. Um, so basically, my, my daily tasks. So it, it varied, like um, uh, on the, during the different periods. But most of the time, I was I was uh, basically working in centers that distribute like clothes or food, basic supplies, and things like that. So um, so so the job was either like to sort different items to sort all the donations that um, we were receiving from from the Polish people, but also from the, all the other countries in Europe. So it's basically yeah, sorting, just um, uh, storing everything, uh, categorizing things um, also, and basically like refilling the different, like the, the, the stores, the shelves where all the, the things are distributed. Uh, welcoming the the refugees, just giving them like basic instructions. Uh, sometimes checking checking like what kind of things were uh, being taken from from the the centers from the, the shop from the, the free shop. Uh, so yeah yeah, it's a lot of uh, of that type of that type of work. Yeah, uh, checking also like checking IDs sometimes just to. Yeah. Um, yes, yes, I, uh, I met, a f I met a few of them. So, um, um, actually, so I, I met different families. Uh, some of them, I met them at the centers, but also like a bit more randomly in, uh, actually in, uh, in the main station in, in Krakow, uh, also in Lviv, in Lviv, when I went to, to Lviv, I met some, some people directly, um, so uh yeah yeah i met a few I met a few families and uh who actually also like yeah told me a bit you know, to, like their stories and yeah, uh, with whom i had like um a closer contact let's say uh yes 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 um for example, so I met like a lady, a lady and her aunt, uh, so in, in Krakow Men Station, for, and um, uh, then so I had them in Krakow. Then they were they came actually to France. I had them in France, and now actually I still I I still I, I keep helping them right now. Uh, yeah, the story it's just, the the was very complicated. The, um, the, actually, the lady, she, her family is in Kherson. All her family is in Kherson, so now it's it's very complicated because they cannot really get out of like the, the occupy zone. Uh, but she, um, that lady, she she traveled to a small city called Vorzel, uh, which is actually a city just nearby Bucha, so in the keep zone, just a few days before the invasion to. Um, for the birthday of her aunt and so she got stuck there uh, because of the invasion starting so they her and her aunt like spent like uh, uh they spent like one month almost like on the basement just like uh, hiding and everything and at some point they they saw like the russian troops just like almost in their garden something like that like, just passing by so and they, they started to hear all the, the atrocities happening around. So they said, yeah, we have to, we have to leave. We have to go out and we have to, to get out like, um, very quickly. So there was like, um, 
during a few hours, the Russians allowed some people to leave. So they just, they just left, but with nothing, they didn't have time like to pack their bags and everything. So when I met them in Krakow, they had almost no luggage at all. Uh, and then, so they took a train, but then they, they told me like the train got kind of bombed or something like that. There were like some explosion and stuff, but the train managed actually to, to leave. Uh, and they arrived, they arrived in, uh, in Poland. And, uh, and now the situation is very complicated because the, the left lady cannot, her family is in Helsinki, her parents, grandparents and sister, and they, she wants to go back there, but it's very dangerous to cross like the checkpoints. Uh, and, uh, she has a brother who wants to go back to Helsinki as well. He's, 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 he's not in Ukraine right now, uh, but he cannot as well because it's too dangerous. So, um, and. They actually ran out of money, so um, so she has to stay like in a in a in a center in Rotterdam in the Netherlands where it's free free accommodation that is kind of convenient that is just well organized. So um, so yeah, so uh, I've also met like that family in in, in Viv. They are from Kramatorsk, uh, and uh, it was like a, a woman and her two daughters and her parents and her husband, they don't want to leave Kramatorsk, uh, even though like now the, the fightings are happening very, very nearby. So uh, um, yeah, she's, she's very worried about this and um, uh, so yeah. Um, so my, my, um, I wanted to actually, I, I wanted to do some donations for, um, to some NGOs. So, uh, so I did some donations in, 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 in Krakow, uh, but actually a lot of, a lot of the help, uh, a lot of things are actually in the NGOs where I was, uh, with whom I was working in Krakow, they were sending a lot of things to to leave actually directly. Um, so with the transport and everything. So, and I felt like probably like in, in, in Viv, the, the situation is probably, I, I mean, I felt like in Krakow, like there's a lot of supports from the Polish people and the, the environment, and the, the conditions are rather good, especially since stuff got stabilized a little bit more now, even though it's still very complicated. So I thought it was probably like uh, more um, more useful like to do donations directly in in Viv like to some NGOs where I, that I see like help like displaced people and uh, and so so yeah so I um, that was my my first motivation let's say I was also interesting to see like how what's the situation on the ground there like is it how different it is from Poland and, and, uh, and, uh, yeah, what's, is it like, uh, do they need like a lot of help there? Or like, I really wanted to understand the situation there. Um, how, also how the people behave like, uh, towards the war and towards the, this whole, this whole thing. So, uh, so yeah, so I just went there like three days. Um, didn't want to stay longer because of like obviously the risk and it's, it's a country in war. So, uh, uh, and actually, what I found out there is like I, I felt that they yeah they miss a lot of th they they need a lot of things. Uh, in the and I felt like yeah in in, in Poland in Krakow uh, there are a lot of uh, of things that were uh, a lot of help was organized and I thought it was more complicated there. Uh, the conditions were uh, were tougher and um, and uh, uh, yeah, a lot of people, for example, explained me that they they are supposed like to get like some uh, some help from the government, and um, but things yeah they don't take some time to receive and stuff and uh, uh, they're a bit on their own for um, so. 
also yeah also observed that the prices there were actually kind of not low at all like uh the, the price of the groceries and everything uh, it was actually surprising and even and even a little bit shocking for some stuff uh probably because of the disruptions of the of the, the, the logistical um, things um so yeah i really when i got there i really understood that it was the yeah it was a good thing actually to go directly there to to provide some help and uh and uh yeah there's probably a big effort to do there Uh, yes, yeah, so I went, I went alone, um, uh, yeah, I went alone, I, um, I, I was a bit preoccupied, I mean, never, uh, yeah, I was a bit worried in general too, because, yeah, the, the thing, uh, uh, didn't really know, like, how really, how things were, how it works, uh, especially, like, because of the, with the, the air, um, alerts and stuff like that um so mm -hmm. i was a bit worried uh just initially when i when i arrived there then i i quickly like um saw like the reaction of the people um about the, the sirens and stuff and um what i had done before is like checking still like what was like the are the 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 air attacks like regular or not like what are the um, the the consequences of these these um, these attacks and stuff um so i thought that the risk was like manageable i mean th th acceptable uh but yeah and actually when i when i arrived in Viv, then i uh, there like some si some uh, some sirens started and uh, I was actually outside, and actually I saw like a lot of people were um, not really reacting to them. They were just um, and just like yeah, doing doing their thing because actually like the, the alarms uh, happen a few times uh, every day, like a few times during the day, and like the the, the real uh, the actual attacks happen just once every you know every ten days or maybe or so. Um, so so yeah so i felt much less um stress let's say by that but still i didn't want to stay too long just I, i've just been there when i just went there and i did like the donation it took me like a few some time like, to find different ngos uh just to check also like what they were doing uh have some contacts and then um organize the donation so basically uh, yeah, going like to big, big hypermarkets, like uh, manage the transport and bring us and bring. And then when it was over, I, I came to to Poland. Uh, mm, yes, I think so. Um, I think so. Like. With the, um, especially by, by volunteering and also by going to Ukraine and by meeting people who, who had suffered from that, like now, like I think the the now I, I have like a different perspectives of things that I I used to worry a lot before or that I used to be preoccupied a lot before. Uh, uh, for example, I met, I met I met that that girl in 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 Krakow in one of the centers. She was actually working in the center, and she she told me how she was explaining to me like how she kind of lost like all she had like she had bought an apartment in Odessa, and then the, to in construction, and then the stuff got got stopped or damaged or something like that. Uh, then she had like a job. She kind of had like the same kind of job that I that I have, and she was like on a interesting project, and then the project stop because they decided obviously like that like disrupted 
and then she had to leave and then some with some money but she realized when when she arrived in Poland that yeah like she couldn't use her money or something like that uh, and then it made me feel yeah like the a lot of things probably that we just care a lot about like it don't have a real meaning I guess in that kind of situation or in that kind of like of event where there's a lot of human suffering or there's a lot of uh, very very tragic thing happens uh, somehow uh, somehow it helps like to to identify like what's uh, what's real I mean what's what's very important and uh, you get to be very close to what's really meaningful in general uh, and um, and yeah and and I also remember even here like uh, um, it felt very weird to come back here in 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 in, uh, in Paris because the environment is so different and people don't really care. I mean, there is like less less uh, people preoccupied are less preoccupied by it. Uh, but um, yeah, I feel now. Yeah, there's a question of yeah. I, I some stuff now. I probably like give them much less importance now. Like things that are. And that not so much in but actually uh, not that important in, in life in general and uh, and also um, also I had never been in a situation where you, you where you see a lot of people just dedicating like their life their time their their energy their money their everything to something that is a bit bigger than them I guess um, so uh so yeah it was very uh it was very meaningful and um and uh in a way uh in a way i feel a bit more hopeful for for the future uh in general like i uh, it's um it's great to see that it's great to uh, observe that Um, I guess the point of view here is, uh, um, so people, so actually it, you know, it, it evolved, I guess it, it kind of evolved, um, during the past few months, but, uh, there was a lot of, 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 um, of, uh, you have attention preoccupation given to, to, to it, like at, at the beginning. Um, now I feel that um, we we always feel a bit. I mean, I guess we have always felt a little bit still a little bit far from it because we don't have we never had like any any direct relations with Russia or and uh, sometimes uh, yeah I guess people feel like it's probably a bit far. It's it's in Eastern Europe. You know, Eastern Europe is not that close from us and and everything. Um, and um, they, they, they actually, most of the people, they, uh, they see, the, the, they hear about the atrocities and all the, the, the terrible things that are um, happening there. So they, they really, they, 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 they care about it somehow. Like they, uh, they just they found that it's, it's very terrible. It's, um, and um, it's not acceptable. But I guess there's not that will to dedicate more uh, more effort to uh, counter this uh, somehow, like uh, because people feel it's a little far. People feel they 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 understand that it's uh, things are terrible things are happening and and, and everything. But uh, yeah, they they don't feel that much involved in it, or maybe they think, oh yeah, the United States are going to solve this or. The UK is talking a, a lot about it, and and uh, it's more of a question of Eastern Europe. I think that's 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 a bit the feeling, and uh, I've seen like for example in the French news. Uh, now it's not the main title, like it's it has been I guess one month or maybe more that it's not the main title anymore, and it's 
Now, well, there were also some, a lot of elections in France uh, lately, so maybe it's uh, explain that. Um, but the people are just people find things, these things are terrible things that are happening, but they don't just go to think to to say, uh, oh, okay, and then we have to like do something more about it. And then we have, our reaction has to be like proportionate, has to be stronger. And, um, uh, and so, yeah, that's a little bit the, and yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's the thing here, especially compared to Poland where you have, uh, all this, uh, continuous involvement of, of like people of energy of like, um, protest of uh, all the flags everywhere and everything it's here. It's a very different environment. I guess, um, well, I guess the, I feel there is probably like, I mean, like now it's, it's like getting and it's, it's getting, it's, um, becoming a very long-term, I guess, a long-term conflict. Uh, so, um, so for me, uh, yeah, for me, it's, it's very important that the Western countries like stay, remain like very involved in it, not just like let things, uh, follow like a natural path and because yeah of what could happen uh, but uh, i understand as well like the situation like i mean the situation changes like a lot of for example a lot of people like um, i have a lot of ukrainians came back for example in the Kyiv region uh now it felt like it's a bit more local the conflict is a bit more localized so probably it will be um probably a bit less um the, it will, um, uh, yeah, it will disrupt probably less Ukraine and other countries if, if people like can go back to a certain form of uh, of, of of life back. Um, but uh, at the same time, yeah, I feel it's really important to yeah to keep being um, uh to keep being concerned about it and then and, um, and do and keep doing some efforts um for for, for ukraine because um it's a very it's uh it's very it's very much a question of principle and values i guess uh, at the end of the day and uh and uh, we cannot uh you know there are like so many there were like a lot of debates about yeah people some countries actually like france uh, France, Germany would, would be pretty happy to like see like a uh, ceasefire or uh, an agreement between Ukraine and, and Russia without knowing, I mean, without saying um, uh, completely frankly, like, oh yeah, uh, Ukraine should leave like a part, she gives, she gave a part of her, of its territory to, to Russia, but no one understand that that's the, the assumption. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, that's a bit disappointing. That's very disappointing, and um, and I really hope it's gonna um, things are gonna go better and better. Then the sanctions are gonna are gonna increase, and um, there's also like the the candidate status of Ukraine in the European Union. So I pretty much hope that it's gonna it's gonna get into the European Union. Um, so yeah. Um, so my two cents on, on this question would be, um, I think, uh, I think eventually like, um, I don't see actually Russia able to stay in the occupied territories, uh, in the mid or in, in the long run, um, because, uh, yeah, cause I think I think for the Anglo-Saxon, it's going to be a question of we we cannot like allow Russia just to eventually be uh, victorious. 
because there is too much of a risk that a few years later, uh, a few years, a few years from now, they will just do it again, <laughs> like they did, like in 2014. I mean, now the lessons, the lesson has been learned. I hope. So I think probably like a lot of countries will keep just um, supporting Ukraine and on the on the, on, on the long run. And I think the Ukrainians they have absolutely no, uh, they have no. Um, say no will to just to just give up and uh so so for me just maybe it's gonna take months or more uh but eventually i can really see like some in the occupied territories like some people just revolting it's, it's actually already happening now uh, i saw in the news um, um even in the eastern in the, in the eastern part of ukraine i think I think they will not be able just to say, oh, okay, now the territories are, are ours. They just like wiped out everything there, and the people cannot probably a lot of people can can will never be able to go back to live there. So uh, and uh, so yeah, and also like I guess the sanctions are going to be uh, the effects of the sanctions are going to be felt more and more in Russia. But I don't really think that it's going to be now. Now Russia became like a super uh like a dictatorship so um so i don't think that the people will be able to express anything and social rebels will, will not have a very strong weight i guess but uh i think eventually yeah i think eventually ukraine will probably like find a way to to get into the european union there will be all these uh yeah, there is all this military support provided, so I think eventually it's gonna Ukraine is gonna become is gonna be victorious. <laughs> uh, but now, if I um, um, actually after I, I I volunteer almost for two months, so at the end of uh. From the end of March, almost like the end of May, so I felt the need just to like take a bit, a bit of time off for me, uh, um, because I I uh, also had like um, I also have like different things to some things that actually that I kind of post during the, that period. So uh, now I I I'm. I think I will go back to Poland, to Krakow in the coming months, probably, but I'm not sure when and how. Uh, something that I would like to do, but um, I'm also, right now, I'm also thinking of more about my, my job, and um, I have actually some plans I, to, to switch job. Not do like a complete switch, but something a bit different is also actually by meeting different people and and having some meaningful experiences, it also helped me like to probably like to clarify some stuff about my uh, my life in general. Um, so so yeah, so uh, so now I'm just like uh, I'm actually like doing some activities. Uh, stuff that I have here and also thinking of uh, of my uh, potentially a changing changing job uh, yeah I think so I think so I uh, I think I will have to <laughs> to come back to to Paul and Krakow uh, at least once because I uh, just to meet again like all the people I met to the people I met there and the, the, the friends I met there and uh, and also yeah to just uh, the experience was uh, was uh, very enriching so and very meaningful so it's really something that I uh, to, to to just go back and yeah in, the, in that environment it's something uh, since I'm also now more I keep I keep helping so so like the two two Ukrainian families so something on the long run I guess. <laughs> yeah.
Um, I think the message would be that, yeah, what, what, what is happening now is very, I mean, it's, uh, it's probably one of the most important events, like in, in, the, in the history of Europe for, for quite a long time. So, uh, so, so people like, um, my advice, if people like some people are hesitating just to do something, it's. Yeah, it's uh, in situation like this, um, there's a lot to do, like really a lot. And but it's not like uh, on the internet, or you don't have like there are not information about about this. Uh, you just have to go on the ground, and uh, you can. Initially, I felt a little bit uh, not legitimate to do it. Maybe so I thought maybe uh, I will not be very useful, or uh, people don't, don't need like in just volunteers like this who go just like without any specific skills to apply and and actually like the there's so much to do and there is so much help that can, be, that can be provided and it's also it's also very important to um, to show that uh that yeah there is like solidarity there is solidarity in the on the European level and uh just like showing that yeah, there is a will to help, or just people, uh, some volunteers go there and uh, are present, even if they don't like coordinate like uh, super projects um, that, that is bringing a lot of uh, I don't know goods or uh, of uh, supplies to to people. Just the fact that it is, it's 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 a very important thing, I guess. And uh, so I would encourage like uh, everyone who wants to have like um, a full experience or who wants to who actually feel preoccupied by, well, by, by, by this and uh, want to actually care about like the, the European values and uh, uh, the principles and or just about human suffering in general because it's, 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 uh, it's a tragedy actually on the level that is happening there. Um, I really encourage them just to, yeah, just to just just to go and um, and uh, yeah, and just help and and then things. It's uh, it's uh, it's probably when uh, when you have like a when you have a very regular life with like a like job, like nine to five job, like job, daily things to do and everything. Uh, we we can actually kind of forget that yeah some things are more important and some things are uh, like eventually we're just human beings and we live with other human beings and that's the basis of society and the basis of of um, how the world works and uh, it's uh, it's a very good I guess um, it's very important to. Yeah, to show that solidarity and uh, at some point, because we here we have never we've we, we've completely forgot like how, how it is to the thing is very stable our life are very stable and everything, but it's it's probably a misconception. So yeah, so that would be my advice to this uh, fully support of the ones who may be hesitating or. So it's very important to do it, and um, and uh, and yeah. <laughs>